um, specifically a bunch of job openings we have. And then I'll also talk about something we're doing tomorrow, which is a PDH uh, marathon. So if you still need PDH credits and you're an engineer, uh, check that out. I'll put a link in the in the uh, chat here in a minute when I get a get a spare second. And we're going to get started here. Hey, Garen, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. From Oklahoma. Wow. People from everywhere today. This is so cool. I love it. We're international, baby. We got it going on all over the world today, so it's, it's a lot of fun. All right, I'm going to switch over to presentation mode here, and we're going to get started in just a second. All right, so I'm going to turn off the countdown timer, which is right there, and I'm going to go into a mode that's easier for you guys to see. You don't need to see my face, I think. Okay, so here we go. So quick discussion on a variable capacity compressor versus a variable speed compressor. We get asked this uh, question all the time. They sound like the same thing, but they're actually extremely different as far as the technology and the, the pros and cons of the, the two uh, compressors. So before we talk about the newer technology, which is the variable capacity or variable speed scrolls, let's go back, let's take a step back and just talk about scroll compressors in general and how they work. Because if you don't understand that, oops, excuse me a second, for some reason my screen unshared. So, um, so before we talk about the newer technology, which is the variable capacity compressor, variable speed compressor, let's just talk about a regular scroll compressor, by far the most common compressor um, found out there in the industry. So see if you can see my mouse. Okay, so here's what's happening on this compressor. You've got this bottom arrow here represents the suction gas coming into the compressor. The gas goes through the two scrolls, which we're gonna look at in a minute, and it adds temperature and pressure to the gas, which comes out the top as the hot discharge gas, which goes off to your condensing unit. It rejects heat to the atmosphere. The motor in this compressor is located down in this territory, and the power is right here. That's where the power connects. That's a typical scroll compressor. Okay, so what's going on inside of this thing? Let's have a look. So if you were to take this cap off here and look inside, you would see a top thick scroll and a bottom orbiting scroll. And what happens is these two things kind of mesh together and sit on top of each other and it compresses the gas. And there's a much better way to visualize that here. So if you were to look down into the top of the compressor and take this cap off, you would see this here on the right. And let me go ahead and play this video for you. Okay, so you can see the gas coming in this chamber here where it's represented by a purplish color. And it goes through these ever decreasing, basically chambers. Okay, and as it goes through these chambers, it basically gets compressed. And, and by the end of the thing here, it's so compressed, it's got a higher temperature and pressure, and it shoots out the top discharge of the compressor. That's how a standard scroll compressor works when it's not a modulating or a, a variable capacity scroll. And it's always on or it's always off. So there's no speed modulation. There's no capacity modulation in a standard on off scroll compressor. Okay, that's the old, well, that's the more common technology. Now, what do we do when we want to modulate the compressor? So we have two options, okay? So first we're going to look at the variable capacity compressor, which has been out, you know, and very popular compared to the VFD compressors. VFD scrolls are relatively newer. So let's talk about the variable capacity compressor first. Okay. Let's talk about some names. It's also called a digital compressor. It's also called a modulating scroll compressor or VCC for short, variable capacity compressor. So all these three names are basically talking about the same, same device, okay? So I'm gonna play this video. You might have to turn your sound up to hear it, but depending on how the, the streaming comes through, I'm gonna play this so you can hear what a digital compressor sounds like. Okay, so if you were listening to that and heard the change in sound, which I think happened about right here. 
play that again real quick. Right there. Okay, so let me show you what's going on inside this compressor. And I'll play that video again in a minute. So, okay, so on the left, you'll see what looks like a standard scroll compressor. Here's what's different in the digital. If you see this top plate goes up, oops. Okay, the top plate goes up and then down, up and then down, up and then down, et cetera. So you get the, you get the idea. So what's happening is when the top plate disengages from the bottom, we are not compressing. We're not doing any work on the refrigerant. When it's down and the plates are, I call them meshed or touching, we're doing work on the refrigerant. Okay, and that's basically how we control the capacity with a variable capacity compressor. The, the motor, if you can see, is always spinning at a constant speed. So the compressor's running always at, let's say, 3,600 RPM. When we need modulation, we, when we need to lower the capacity, we disengage the top scroll and we, we lower the capacity in. And here's kind of what that looks like, okay? How does that look? You know, how do we control that? How do we break that up? I'm gonna do something crazy here and try to use this pen on here. It's not gonna look very pretty, but I'm gonna get the point across, I think. So we take 15 second cycles and let's say we're at 50% capacity, which is noted up here. So over a 15 second cycle, we pump for seven and a half seconds and we disengage the scrolls for seven and a half seconds. So for seven and a half seconds, they're down, they're touching. For seven and a half seconds, they're up. So on and so forth, we go down the, the line. So let's say, for example, we needed 80% of our load. So we break up the 15 second increments, 12 seconds pumping, three seconds not pumping. It's called a pulse, pulse width modulation method, the same way we kind of control SCR heat. So it works very simple. It's very easy and uh, easy to control. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my pen off. I'm gonna play this one more time. And now listen, you can hear, you're gonna hear a couple things. You're gonna hear a click, and then you're gonna hear a change in the compressor noise. And we'll talk about what's going on there. Okay, so what's happening there? The click you're hearing is a solenoid here, right here. You can see that. And the suction gas is at a lower pressure than the discharge gas. So what happens is when this solenoid opens, it creates a low pressure here on the top and the top scroll is able to release or go up. So you hear a click and then a change in the compressor sound which is the plates unmeshing, and then a change in the sound again when the plates come back together. It's very simple. This particular compressor is almost fully loaded. You could tell by the fact that it just unloads and reloads very fast. And I'll just play that one little second, one more time. Now it's engaging back, so. Okay, so that's a digital compressor. I think we've heard enough. Of that. Okay, so this slide is just to show you a little bit of the benefits of modulating compressors, specifically the digital scroll. I don't think anybody has to be convinced that they use less power than on-off compressors, but here we go nonetheless. So on the bottom, on the x-axis, you see percentage of full load capacity. So on the left, we're at zero capacity. On the right, we're at 100. On the y-axis, you see percent of full load power. So on the bottom, you see zero power. On the top, you see 100. As you would suspect, expect, you know, when we need zero capacity, we're using zero power. When we need 100% of the capacity, we're using 100% of the power. Now, these lines here, the blue one represents the power consumption of a digital scroll compressor over the, you know, variant of percent of full load capacity. And the hot gas bypass line does the same thing. So you can take an example here. Let's say at 50% load, you had a digital compressor where you're only using 60% of the full load power, but if you have an on-off compressor with hot gas bypass, you're using almost the full capacity of the compressor. I don't think this is earth shattering news. We all know that modulating compressors save energy, but I think that's a really cool slide nonetheless. Okay, variable speed compressors. So we talked about a typical on-off compressor. We talked about a variable capacity compressor or a digital scroll or, um, 
a VCC. Okay, all names for the same thing. What about a variable speed compressor? Um, as in the last example, it has a few different names, modulating scroll compressor, inverter compressor, and VFD compressor. You see we've added a few extra components here. We've added a VFD, and we've also added an electronic expansion valve. So, so a few extra things needed to make this work. And here's, here's the big difference. So if you were to take and look inside this can on a variable speed compressor, what do you notice that's different? from the variable capacity compressor. So you would notice right off the bat that it's changing the speed, right? On the other compressor, the VCC, we don't change the speed. We're, the speed is constant and we modulate the capacity by the lifting and unlifting of the, of the scrolls. Here, the scrolls are always engaged and we're just modulating the capacity. So we need less capacity, we slow down the compressor, we need more capacity, we speed it back up, very, very simple and easy to understand in my opinion. Okay, so which one do I use? Which one's better, right? Let's go through and look at a few different attributes and kind of put them in the column of, of who has the advantage on these, these, different, uh, these different engineering things we're gonna look at here. Okay, so lower first cost. Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see the one on the right has less stuff, right? There's no VFD, there's no electronic expansion valve. Also the simple, the controls are simpler. So the VCC variable capacity compressor, I'm gonna give that to the lowest first cost, I'm gonna give that to the VCC in that column. Acoustics. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this too, um, before I talk about acoustics, anything I tell you here could change in a week because the technology changes all the time. Different manufacturers come out with different products all the time. Always please consult your representative of these products to see what the latest news is and what's going on. I'm giving you a general overview as I understand it at this moment in time during this presentation. So if I would have done this presentation a week ago, I would have put acoustics in the variable speed column without even thinking about it, okay? The variable capacity compressor does have that engaging and disengaging, which creates, you know, acoustical unpleasantness if it's in the wrong place at the wrong time, okay? Usually that's not a big deal. Um, I think in my 10 years, I may have had one issue where I had to provide an extra sound blanket. It's not that big of a deal if it's prepared for in time. Uh, the variable speed compressor is, is quieter when it's slower in RPM. The problem is they, some manufacturer, I can't remember who, just came out with one that has like 7,200 RPMs at full load. So that's a screamer. That's a loud compressor. So this is one of those kind of things. It depends. I would say most of the time your variable speed probably has an advantage on acoustics. So I'm going to put that over there, but please again, check with your representative to make sure. Oil return. So this is a biggie. So in DX equipment, what happens is the oil is mixed with the refrigerant and it travels throughout the system, through the evaporator, through the condenser, um, through the compressor, et cetera. The ability to get that oil back is totally dependent on the velocity of the refrigerant. So as you could imagine, if the refrigerant has a higher velocity, it pushes this very viscous oil back easily. As we slow down the refrigerant velocity, it you know, prohibits the ability to get the oil back easily. So the VCC, the variable capacity compressor, when it's pumping, it's always pumping at full velocity. So we have a much better um, way to push the oil back to the compressor. As we noted, the variable speed compressor does not have a constant velocity. It's changing. So if it's running at a part load for a long time, the oil can get entrained in the system. Now, th is that a problem? No, it's not a problem. The manufacturers have a way to monit either monitor the oil or they have a timing in the system. They know if it runs for at you know lower than 20% for X minutes, they're going to ramp it up to full load for a couple of minutes to bring the oil back. And that's that's not uncommon. That's done at VRF systems all the time. Here's the issue you may run into. So 98% of the time, it's probably not gonna be an issue. If you're doing a very precise temperature control area, like manufacturing or maybe like a surgery suite, and you're running at part load a lot, you may not want that compressor to run up to full load because you might lose your temperature and your humidity. So be, be careful of that. Be cognizant of that. You know, if it goes to full load for three minutes when you don't want it to, you're going to cool the air and dehumidify the air more than you might need to. So I only mentioned that to, you know, just look out for that. So a little return I'm going to throw over to that column. Efficiency, no brainer. 
VFD is more efficient. It's one of its best, um, you know, attributes is the higher efficiency, which is great. Turn down. This is another thing that seems to change every time I do this presentation. I have to make five calls and figure out what's going on. The gist of it is the variable capacity compressor turns down to 10% of its nominal capacity. Okay, so if you have a 20 ton unit with two 10 tons, you get the drift. You can really turn these things down a lot. On the VFD compressor, I hear, depending on the manufacturer and size, anywhere from 10 to 25% turn down. There used to be some that only had a 50% turn down. I don't think that's the case anymore. So again, check with your manufacturer just to see what the turndown is, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of part load. But given those reasons, I'm going to put turndown in the variable capacity uh, compressor slot here. So serviceability. Um, this is another thing that's not thought of very often. You know, if you've got a, you know, you're specifying a job or helping an owner on a school board that, you know, is in an area that, you know, the service techs, might not know how to work on VFDs. They might not know anything about electronic expansion valves. And you want to keep it real simple. The variable capacity compressor is probably the way to go in that scenario. So keep serviceability in mind. Okay, so there's a little kind of summary of the pros and cons. And, you know, there's engineering trade-offs to every technology. I use the variable speed scroll. I have used it many times to great excess, success. And I've used the variable capacity compressor many times to great success. So really, it depends on your application. It depends on the budget. It depends on the location of the owner. And I see I'm going over my, my um, right on the edge of my 15 minute time. So which technology is best? Again, it depends. You know, talk to your rep, feel it out, get the differences in cost. You know the deal, the differences in efficiency. Look at what that payback will be over a couple of years. And uh, there's the, it depends, you know, I've been hearing that for 25 years in the industry, which one's better? It depends. So, okay. So if you have questions, please put them in the chat. I would be glad to uh, stick around and answer them. I'm going to go over a few things that's really exciting and going on at Insight. We got some job openings. We got some uh, PDH um, deal coming up tomorrow. I'm going to talk about, so I'm going to go over to this mode here. Okay, so thanks again for watching that. If you have questions, please put them in the chat. I'm glad to stick around and answer any questions that I'm, that I'm capable of. And if I can't answer them, I'll get them back to you. So a few announcements um, tomorrow. So if you're watching this replay, this is the, fifth, the 14th that I'm on here live. Tomorrow on the 15th, we're having a December HVAC PDH marathon. So we've got four different one-hour classes. Hey, thanks, Dave. Um, I'm just checking the comments over here. Thank you, Dave. And if you want, if you need PDH credits, please come join us. I'll put the link in the um, chat here when I'm done with the presentation. I'll put it in the comments. Okay, looking for a job? Hey, we got plenty of openings at Insight Partners. So we are located in North Carolina, South Carolina, um, Georgia, and Florida. And I'm going to go over a couple current openings. And we're always looking for good people. So if you're looking for a job, you're looking to make a change, Message me here on LinkedIn. I'm glad to, I'm glad to point you in the right direction. Um, thank you, Cliff. Cliff says, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate you. Um, and by the way, if you're going to leave, before you leave, please like this video. If you liked what you saw, I'd appreciate it. So now hiring HVAC sales, sales, HVAC sales in Jacksonville, Florida. We're looking for a sales manager, commercial sales, commercial equipment, and a um, account executive or sales engineer, as we like to call them. Uh, in Tampa, we need a project manager. So if you're looking for a job in Tampa, HVAC, again, message me for any of these things. Um, and I'll be glad to, and I see some questions coming in. Thank you, Craig. And I'll answer those in just a second. Um, so this is hot off the, all these jobs are like, we need someone right now. Okay. So <laughs> the, if you're looking and you're in these cities, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, we'll get you hooked up. We'll get your resume. We'll get you an interview. Um, HVAC account executive in Raleigh, North Carolina. There's a beautiful picture there of Raleigh. Uh, HVAC project manager in Raleigh, North Carolina. And again, if you don't see your state here, please reach out to me. We're always looking for, for good folks. Um, please connect with us if you like what you saw here. We have a YouTube channel, Insight Partners HVAC TV. That's the name of our company, Insight Partners. And then HVAC TV, come, in, come and check that out. We also have a podcast, which is which is growing. Uh, that's on Apple, and it's the Engineers HVAC Podcast. You can check that out. And of course, 
Connect with me here on LinkedIn, like this video, share it. We would greatly appreciate it. And thank you, because we just reached a thousand downloads on the Engineers HVAC podcast. So we've only got like seven podcasts up there. I need to get off my uh, keister and do some more podcasting because it's a lot of fun. It seems to be something people like, so you can join us um, on Apple. We're also on Spotify. Uh, are any of the jobs owner-focused? Good question, Dave. Um, we do have some of those jobs. So again, anything in the HVAC industry, just message me. I'll kind of tell you what we, we got. I'll get your resume and we'll point you in the right direction. Thank you, Dave, for reminding me of that. Okay. So coming soon, we have this new uh, website we're building called Insight Partners Service Academy. It's going to be linked to our main website. And you can come here if you're a contractor in one of our areas, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, or Florida, and you could sign up and schedule your service training, get your tech certified on um, Aon products, on Samsung products. And soon we're going to be adding a whole bunch of other products. We rep uh, a ton of products in the Southeast, and you can see all of those at Insight USA. Com. And a lot of this information I'm going to post in the comments uh, when this is over. So great. So thank you all for your time. I'm going to see, I think there's just a couple questions here. And before you go, please like this video. And thank you so much. If you want to hang out, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Steve Klinkson. Um, Steve is one of our great uh, salesmen, uh, account executives in our Charlotte office. And he's always such a good supporter. So thank you so much for that. Um, Rod said, thanks, informative. Um, let me go through. I think there's a few questions I saw here. What is the difference? Neil has, is asking, what is the difference between the VFD compressor and the inverter? I, it, my understanding is the in, inverter is just a, another name for the compressor or the motor that is, is able to another, the inverter is another name for the VFD variable frequency drive. Um, or maybe it's the name for the motor that's can be run by the VFD, I'm not sure. Really, it's the same thing. So inverter compressor, VFD compressor, in terms of these scrolls we're talking about today, it would be it would be the same dealio. So let's see here. Jacob is asking, thank you, Jacob, for the question. For the VCC, how do the two scrolls make compression in the pumping cycle? Is it strictly tolerance or is there an actual seal uh, my my understanding, it's an actual seal. It's uh, metal on metal. If someone has another, you know, explanation for that, let me know. But I, 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 I'm pretty sure it's just a seal. I'm pretty sure it's pretty uh, tight in there. Yep. Michael Cartelli, thank you. Inverter is a VFD. So it's the same. It's just two different words for the same uh, piece of technology. So variable frequency drive or inverter, uh, it's the same. Same deal. So thank you, Michael. Okay. Well, again, I, I greatly appreciate all the support. These have been tons of fun. Please connect with us on YouTube, um, Insight Partners HVAC TV. I'll put the link in the, in the um, comments here in a minute. Uh, check out our podcast, the Engineers HVAC Podcast. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Please like this video if you like what you saw. I greatly appreciate it. Um, Angel, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll hit you on the next one. So thank you all so much and hope you have a good day.